Hi, welcome to Eden Center, a place where we take over territories. The message you're about to watch with Aki Aki Bellu will bless your life and impact it in different ways. And you can always share this link to your friends. You should also invite your family and friends to sit and watch this clip with you. <laughs> Rakasata, 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 Rakas
words before him speaking as covenant words it does not cost God anything to meet the things you have in your heart he just wants to be your focus Jesus be the center it's all about I 
the center of it all. It's you that I see, Lord. This will happen the next six months. When they happen, you say, God, I thank you for this, but you know this is not my focus. Jesus, you are still my focus. I thank you for this money that you brought to me. But honestly, it's not my focus. It is you. It is you. Hallelujah. Clap your hands tonight and celebrate the Lord. Shout unto the Lord with the voice of triumph. Give him a shout. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Please be seated tonight. Amen. What do we say to our minister, Busola? Can we celebrate her tonight? God bless you, Basala. God bless you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I was telling my team in the office, I said, connect this media. Let's just make it very small. Let's make it very, very, no promo. In fact, it came out maybe on Sunday. Let's just, I just want a group of people that will understand what I taught yesterday. Did you get something yesterday? Please, let that be the experience of your Christian faith. Of your Christian faith. Yesterday we started with Matthew chapter 6 and verse 10. Jesus was praying. And as he was praying, one of the disciples went to Eve's job. And they heard Jesus praying. And they said, Jesus, we've been wasting our time all our lives. We've been praying nonsense. Then the disciple asked Jesus, teach us to pray. Because they heard him pray. But they have also been praying. But because they heard him pray, they said, it looks like all our life we've been saying nonsense. An average Christian is thinking of needs. Why did you come into the kingdom? They told you you'll be prosperous. And I told you yesterday that that's a lie. You don't need to be pros you don't, you don't need to be rich. You don't, you don't come to the church to be rich. They told you that when you come, you get healed. You know, so when some people draw back in faith, when some people say that ah, I've, I've tried church, church didn't work. You know, it's because you came because you wanted to take something. You didn't come for Jesus. You didn't come for him. If I came for Jesus, if you step on my toe, you don't matter. I came for Jesus. If the pastor steps on me, if the bishop steps on me, honestly, I didn't come for you. I came for bishop. Many times I've been offended in my life. Many times. And the Holy Spirit keeps reminding me, but is that your focus? Is that your focus? So they heard Jesus prayed. And they said, please teach us to pray. Let's get born again into the spirit of prayer. Let's learn how to pray. Because they heard what Jesus was saying. He wasn't saying anything that has to do with needs. He wasn't saying anything that has to do with things he wants. He wasn't talking about anything money. See, if you want to continue this hustle life and use God for your hustle, you will get tired. You will honestly get tired. Because when they are not coming, you will feel like giving up. That's when you hear things like, I've tried all that I could. In fact, we are using Jesus. We are using God. We are using him. So many times, when you're, last week I was sharing, when Victoria Renze was here, when some people are worshipping and they are crying, their motive is what they are asking God. God, this Jeep. This Jeep. And they are praying. And they are crying. And God comes to check in an atmosphere of worship. What's your motive for what you are doing? It's because of house rent. And he shakes his head. And he says that when will my children get this thing? One day I woke up from my dream, 2007. And I hear God say to me, I woke up and I was in tears. And he said to me, I will never forget. He said, my sons, I've lost the essence of the faith. Where are my true sons? It's the people who chase miracles. Have you noticed that it's the same set of people that go from place to place? Oh, there's power here. And forgetting that power was a byproduct in the kingdom. You saw it yesterday. That if you carry the kingdom, it comes with power and with what? Glory. And I explained to you that what we call the Lord's Prayer. I mean, when you say something is the Lord's Prayer, it means that the Lord prayed there. And we saw it that Jesus didn't pray there. It's like going, you're in a consulting firm and you have tempted for solving problems. 
So can you go back and give an empty template back to your client when you have not filled it up? They came to me, Jesus, and said, teach us to pray. And Jesus said, pray in this manner. This is a template. Our Father who art in heaven and lowered be. He wasn't praying. He was a specimen. He was teaching. It's not the Lord's prayer. Jesus didn't pray there. We saw in John 17 how he prayed, where he prayed, the things he prayed, and the people he prayed for. He prayed for himself. He prayed for the disciples. Then prayed for the believers that are coming after the disciples. It was absolutely kingdom advance. Six verse eight. Let's start from verse eight tonight. But be not therefore like unto them. So when you see some people say, God is house rent, Lord. God is a car. God is this. God is that. Do not be like them. When you hear people praying like that, you say, not them. They are the ones he's talking about. Don't be like them. For your father, your father, your father. It means that they don't have a father. And you know, when you don't have a father, you'll be looking for surrogacy up and down. The desire is to find somebody who can meet your needs. Say, but you're a father. He said, you've got father. He said, he doesn't have, they don't have a father. That's why they are seeking needs. Did you see how Jesus messed up Solomon yesterday in the Bible? That he said, have you considered the lilies? They do not sow. They do not reap. He said, yet your heavenly father takes care of them. He said, Solomon in his greatest array is not like them. Ha! It, it's like, it, it, was, it was messing up the guy. Like, if you are chasing also and material things, he said, you cannot... If you need to repent, repent again. In case the reason why you came is because they told you Jesus will heal you, he will save you, he will do those things. But I'm talking to believers in this meeting. This is believers meeting. This is not a Sunday meeting. When I'm talking to, to, to multitudes, I'm talking to believers. Don't be like them. Then he says in verse 9, you, you pray like this, in this manner. And he says, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So do you see that even when you come to church and you miss the place of just if you want to come for the word and you miss the place of acknowledging the father there's a protocol that you have jumped. Then the prayer begins. He said thy kingdom come. I'm going to stay with this one. And thy will will be done in the earth as it is in heaven. The prayer was thy kingdom come. That tells you that, and, and it says the will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So look at it. Will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So it means that the heavens or the heaven is the author of the will of God, while the earth is the executor of the, of the will of God. Are we together? So in between, how do you find a connect between the heaven and the earth? What is called the will? That, so what brings that will from that heaven to, for it to be perfected on the earth? What does that primarily in the spirit is the place of prayer? And that's why they were talking about prayer here. That's what enforces his will on the earth as it is in heaven. A pray, a, you see, if you don't know how to pray, and if you don't pray the right prayers, like we said yesterday, you will not be able to enforce. You see, let me tell you the truth. Every man can receive the love of God. God loves every man. But when it comes to the issues of compelling things on the earth and governance and being able to be in charge of some things on the earth, it's not the general God loves me that produces that. You must be able to come into the spirit to enforce it. And the only tool that gets that done is prayer. Prayer. The devil knows why he's attacking your prayer life. And the devil knows why he's suggesting some religious prayers that are not blessing you to you. So, because he knows you love drama. 
that he gives you drama to distract you. Then once he distracts you, he knows that even if you spend two hours, you have not prayed. Even if you spend two hours, you have not prayed. The prayer of Jesus had nothing to do with marriage. Interestingly. Did you hear Jesus pray for marriage? I mean, we look at who we are following. His, his, his prayers had nothing to do with money. It had nothing to do with money. I can show you my prayer card for the past 15 years of my life. At least I can track 15 years. My prayer card every year where I have 10 needs. And you can always tie everything to the kingdom. I've never trusted God for a car in my life. I've not trusted God for money in my life. I've not, it's like, I'm not trusting God for it. I'm not, I'm, it's not a prayer point. We've never at a point in this church gathered together and say, oh God, the finances of this church must move forward. We have never. If we gather as leaders to pray, what do we pray about? Huh? The oil, fresh oil. That's what we gather to pray. And we are there for one hour, praying in tongues, fresh oil. Fresh oil, fresh oil. That's all we pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Is your heart open tonight? Do you know that when they were praying this prayer, you know Jesus was alive. So because he was alive, they were saying, thy kingdom come. They were saying, thy kingdom come. Because he was still alive. So everybody that were praying this prayer template in those days, they were in search of a kingdom. So because the prayer was the kingdom come. So they're expecting the kingdom to come. They're expecting the kingdom to come. So while they were expecting the kingdom to come, do you know the kind of miracles that was happening in the hands of Apostle Paul? Apostle Peter. And those were guys that were expecting the kingdom to come. And the kingdom has not come. Yet they were doing massive miracles. I've taught us before that did you know that Paul did not plan to heal people with handkerchiefs? Or is it shadows? He didn't plan it. Peter didn't plan to heal people with what? With the shadows. It wasn't. It was because people were too much. And he said, no, my energy is going to fail me. When he sent handkerchiefs out, it wasn't that he gathered them to come and take mantle. He just felt that he can't be everywhere at the same time. So it was a demand of the spirit that made him do that. They were all expecting a kingdom. Let the kingdom come. Let the kingdom come. Yet they were walking in power. Yet they were walking in glory. And they were walking in strong anointings. See, this is part of the things they walked with. See Mark chapter 16 and verse 15. As at this time, the kingdom has not come. When this scripture was written. Mark chapter 16 and verse 15. And he said to them, Go ye into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Fantastic. 16. And he that is he that believeth and is baptized is going to be saved. And so the baptism is talking about this, not baptism of water. It's talking about coming into Christ that they shall be saved. For anyone who names the name of the Lord, he said they shall be saved. So he wasn't talking about water there. He said, So they shall be baptized. And he that believeth not, they are going to be damned. So it tells you that two things are being compared there. That so if you get baptized, you are going to be saved. And the next one is that if you don't believe it, you shall be damned. So the opposite of being saved is being damned. Then the opposite of being baptized is to what? Is to, is, of being baptized is for you to be, the opposite is for you to be damned. So you know what it's telling you? It's telling you that it's either you come into Christ and you stay there, you'll be saved. But if you are not in Christ, he said, you are going to be condemned. You are going to be damned. So see the next verse. Then in verse 17, he says, and these signs shall follow them that believe. And the word signs there talks about token. A token. It follows them that believe. 
He said, in my name, they will do what? Talk to me, talk to me. They will do what? Cast out devil. These are people who are still looking for the kingdom. And they are praying that kingdom come. And they were casting out demons. See another thing they were doing. They shall speak with new tongues. These are not people who are born again. He's talking about people who are looking and praying that kingdom come. That's the prayer that they are praying. Next verse. Then you have Christians now. You pray in tongues, but you don't pray in new tongues. The same tongue you've been praying for five years. I hope you know there's something called new tongues. That your tongue changes as you mature. Oh yes. Your tongue changes as you mature. Oh yes, it changes. You don't pray in tongues the same way for five years. It means you're not growing. It changes. See the next thing he said. He said, they shall take up serpent. And if they drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt them. These are the people praying thy kingdom come. I love this one. He said, this ones they shall lay hands on the sick and they are going to recover. And they are still looking for the kingdom. That's why when Jesus was speaking yesterday, you know I told you that Jesus loves John the Baptist so much. He loves him really good. And let me prove to you, you know, because you guys think that the only great prophets in the Bible was Elijah and Eli and, um, and Moses. Those were the great prophets in the Bible, you know. And <laughs> I told you about, if you were to compare Jesus and Moses yesterday, you saw that Moses did far better than Jesus. He did better. He led three million people on the dry ground. Jesus didn't get one person saved till he died. And that's why I said that if you look into this kingdom and all you are doing is performance, you have missed it. Comparison, you have missed it. That's Moses speaking inside of you. Not Jesus. Do you know that? Let me tell you how much Jesus loved John the Baptist. Jesus knew that John the Baptist was sent to go ahead of him to prepare his ministry. How many of you remember that story? So one day, John the Baptist was going to turn into a still baby or a miscarriage. The devil was going to turn him into blood. Jesus was also in the fetus. And Jesus said, no, I don't need to be on earth to get you filled in the Holy Ghost. I don't need to. He said, from a fetus level, Jesus was getting people filled with the Holy Ghost. And the Bible says, and the baby of Elizabeth began to leap. Because Jesus showed up inside Mary. Do you think it's because of Mary came? At the sound of your salutation, my baby leaped. So it's just like saying somebody say, morning, you know. And the baby start leaping. You should think about it. Who is Mary? Who is Mary? In the question of faith, who is Mary? It wasn't Mary. It was what Mary was carrying. Mary was carrying a kingdom. And the kingdom of darkness was going to kill John the Baptist. So if there was no forerunner, Jesus was going to miss it. And Jesus said, I know what the devil is planning. I've come with a new kingdom. I didn't just come with a new kingdom. I am the new kingdom. Do you know that's why they thought that when Jesus came, he was going to come fight the Roman government. So they thought he was going to be government to government. That's the Messiah they were expecting. But they didn't know that he carried the kingdom on his inside. The Bible says John the Baptist began. He was praying in the Holy Ghost in the womb. <laughs> that's why I look at full grown Christians. So if you can pray in tongues. So if you can pray in tongues for 20 minutes. If a fetus, a fetus can be filled with the Holy Ghost. Filled with the Holy Ghost. And you are matured. I'm wondering what are you doing? What are you doing? If you check your spiritual age, some of you are less than two months. Yet you have advanced in the physical age or biological age. So Jesus looked at John the Baptist one day. <laughs> uh, I'm going to come back here. I think that was Luke chapter 7 and verse 28. He looked at John the Baptist. You know, the same way he messed up Solomon. See how he messed up John the Baptist. He said that amongst all that are born of women, that there's no one that is as great as John the Baptist. 
Luke 7, 28. Amongst all that are born of women, I say to you, there's not a greater prophet than John. That's powerful. That's, if you read that kind of statement, you say, no, John is great. See the end of the statement. He now said that, but he that is least in the kingdom, not he that is looking for the kingdom. Remember, everybody up unto John the Baptist, they are looking for the kingdom. So their prayer is, thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Then he said that even the least that has come into the kingdom is greater than John the Baptist. Is greater than John the Baptist. But don't think John the Baptist is cheap. How many of you can heal the sick. How many of you, do you know that the only miracles you are getting now as Christians is career, have you noticed that? Career advancement. Making more money. You know that's the, that's the latest testimony. It, it, it has become so, so uh, motivational that the testimonies you get are not spiritual testimonies. They are just testimonies of the thing. And can I tell you, don't be fooled. Those testimonies you share, people who don't know Christ, they are getting much more. That God promoted you. That they seized your promotion and they promoted you two times. I rejoice with you. So that you won't feel bad. That how come I'm not rejoicing? But I'm telling you that in the question of the things in the spirit, it, it, it's nothing. It's nothing. See the five things measured. Can you lay hands on the sick and they will recover? He says that if you drink poison, will you not end up in the hospital? Do you speak new tongues? Do you cast out devils? Or you embrace devils? If some of you devils enter you. I see one of the things I've not been able to understand in my faith journey is how the devil enters into a Christian. Then you will not be looking for really for deliverance. You will not be looking for deliverance. You in the kingdom. In the kingdom. How did they enter into the kingdom that you carry? Let my whole life be expressions of your grace. Can you sing that? Let my whole life, let my whole life be expressions of your grace. Let my whole life, Lord, let my whole life be expressions of your grace. Sing it from your heart. Let my whole heart, let my whole life, life be expressions of your faith. One more time. Let my whole life, let my whole life. The expressions of your grace. With all the drama in the Old Testament, they were just eroding the kingdom. They were announcing the kingdom. And yet they died, never entering into the kingdom. They never entered into the kingdom. And they were just heralding it, speaking about it, preaching about it, talking about it. Yet they never entered into it. Amongst all that are born of women, none is as great as John the Baptist. But you know, Adam was not born of a man and he was not born of a woman. So if you check the order, it's called the first Adam. Then the Bible now begins to talk about the what? The last Adam. He didn't say the second Adam. Check what the Bible says. Because if there's a second Adam, it means there's going to be a third Adam. It means there's going to be a fourth. He said, so he that is born, so Adam, the first one, was not born of a woman. Then the second one was also not born. Have you not read in John chapter 1 that he was born, not of the flesh, not of the will of man, but he was born of God. Let's see something in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Anybody in the kingdom. And so can I tell you something? If you say, Jesus, I accept you into my life. You got a visa to enter into a kingdom. That's what happens. Do you know John the Baptist never got born again? As powerful as he was. He didn't have the, the, the pleasure of getting born again. The thing that you put as simple, I'm born again, I'm born again, I'm born again now. 
I'm born again now. And you carry with so much levity. John lived all his life. He couldn't say, Lord Jesus, I receive you into my life. He couldn't. Elijah, a man of like passion that closes the heaven, breaks the heaven, opens the heaven, brings down fire, was never opportune to receive the kingdom. Then how much more you that have received the kingdom? How much more you? How much more? How much more you? The kingdom is greater than John the Baptist. Hmm. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, wherein ye stand. Let's fast forward. Go to verse 45. We're going to take 45 to 50. So it is written that the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. And the last Adam, do you see what I was saying? Not the second Adam. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. So did you see the difference? The first one that was born, not of a flesh, not of a woman. He was born and he was just a living soul. So it was a kind of resurrection. That he says that this last one was also made as a quickening spirit. So go to the next verse, verse 46 now. He says, how be it, which... How be it that was not first, which is spiritual, but that which is natural. So it says that they, those ones who were before Christ, they were all natural. He said, afterward, that which is spiritual. He's talking about two things. The first Adam and the last Adam. The first Adam was natural. The second Adam was supernatural or was spiritual. So the first man is of the earth. So he is earthy. He that is born of the earth is of the earth. He's earthy. Then he says that the second man is the Lord from heaven. The Lord from heaven. See the next verse, 49. As he is the earthy, go to verse 48, sorry. As he is the earthy, such are they that are also earthy. And as he is in the heavenly, such are they that are also heavenly. Then verse 9, 49. As we have been born in the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. And verse 50. I love this one. Now this I say to you brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So put the scripture there. A man came to me, Jesus, what shall I do that I will enter? Do you see that? That was the question. How can I enter the kingdom of God? That's what they were looking for. Every man was looking for the kingdom. Jesus said, except the man be born again. He cannot enter into the kingdom of God. And you know that, you, you can't see, for you to be born again, Jesus need to die. Except the man be born again, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. He cannot see the kingdom of God. Then in verse 7 in John 3, he says, except the man be born of the spirit, he said, he cannot what? Enter into the kingdom. So he talks about two things. When you are born again and you are also born of the spirit. You cannot enter into the kingdom. Can I tell you why this kingdom has not become so real to you? You have not been full of the spirit. Your Christianity is about what can I get? What can I get? What can I get? It's a normal Nigerian hustle. You meet anybody on the road, any young person on the road, what can I get? What can I get? What can I get? I even met a, 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 an army officer who is, I mean, is, is a chaplain. He's a chaplain. You know, and I felt like this one is going to be a bit reasonable. After two weeks, he was asking me for money. I said, why is this country like this? You see a human being, you're just thinking of what can I get? What can I get? So you come to Jesus, what can I get? If he's not paying me, let me try something else. Let me try something else. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. He cannot. Peter made a statement one day. He shocked everybody. Jesus told him that for you to know, he said flesh and blood did not reveal. He said, Peter, you are getting close to this thing. You are getting close. You are the closest in the Old Testament, you are the closest getting to this thing. Say, I'm going to, upon this rock will I build my church. You are the closest to the kingdom issue that we are talking about. So upon you will I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail over it. Let me explain that scripture to you. When he says that I upon this rock will I build my church. Peter spoke 
And Jesus said, upon that revelation of flesh and blood, not revealing this to you, which is upon the revelation of the spirit, I'm going to build my church. And for you to be known that I'm building set the gate of hell to architect what I built. So the first thing that came to test the church that gate of hell. So when the gate of hell came to test it, it means that Jesus Christ needed not to have resurrected. Are you with me? So if the gate of hell was so powerful and prevailed to resurrect from hell. How many of you remember Tetelestai? That Jesus showed up in hell and the Bible says in Colossians 2.15, having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a public show of them and he just triumphed over them in hell and he says lift up your head so ye get. So when Jesus came out of hell, he didn't come out alone. He now opened all in the kingdom. They did not enter into the kingdom. They don't have eternal life. He said Elijah come out. He said, oh, if Joseph come out. Isaac come out. And all of them came out of the grave and they had to follow him to heaven. Which means that the gate of hell did not prevail. How did the gate of hell not prevail? Because the spoils came out of hell. And when the spoils came out of hell, the church was born out of hell. Glory to God. I said the church was born out of hell. That means that the devil could not hold the believer it tells me that the highest level of power on the earth is inside the believer full of power on earth is inside the believer you know why the believer is not seeking the kingdom the kingdom is already inside the believer so the kingdom is inside you it's something to rejoice about so the kingdom is already inside you thank you lord jesus wow I'm going somewhere. Let me just tie it up somewhere. Go to Luke 17 and verse 20. If you can give me the NASB version. If you can give me NASB version of Luke 17. Sometimes you wonder why am I so confident about, about my faith in God. I was one of the spoils that came out of hell. So it means that the gate of hell already tested me. And they couldn't prevail. See, it's not a prevail. It has happened already. It happened in hell. And they didn't prevail. It sounds spiritual. Dramatic. The church is marching on. The church is marching on. The gate of hell shall not prevail. No. It couldn't prevail. Jesus fought over hell. And dealt with hell. And he came out with the church. Church of Jesus. Do any church of Jesus on the earth. This battle has been one long time ago. There's nothing that can ever make the church to bleed again because the gate of hell tested it and hell returned back to where it came from. See the scripture. Fantastic. Now, having been questioned by the Pharisees as to when the kingdom of God was coming, so everybody was looking for this kingdom. When is this kingdom coming? He answered them and said, The kingdom of God is not coming with signs to be observed. You know, they were thinking observation that one day there's going to be a fight between the Roman government and Jesus will come out with his men and fight them and kill the Roman governor and kill the Roman emperor that he will now emerge as their leader. He said, no, the kingdom that is coming is not by observation. It's not by hostility. In fact, the word observation there in the Greek talks about hostility. It's not about they were all they were all off verse 21 we're going to take it down to 25 he said so no we will just say look here it is or there it is he said for the kingdom of god is in your midst listen to me when they say something is in your midst no king james didn't get it well king james says that they didn't understand it but now this one says that the kingdom of god is in your midst how can a kingdom be in your midst then who is the kingdom talk to me who is the kingdom Christ is the kingdom. And how did Christ come into us? Through the spirit. So if you have the Holy Ghost, you have the kingdom on your inside. I said you have the kingdom on your inside. I said you have the kingdom on your inside. So you know what that means. That's why when Jesus could get a fetus 
to pray in the Holy Ghost. It means that when we step into a place without even knowing that a demon is there on his own accord, the demon starts shouting. But we didn't even know. We were just walking around. Glory to God. We never knew that we were sick. But we just, I mean, one day I went to do my normal yearly checkup. Yearly checkup. I do 62, 60. I check my body 60. 60 of test. I check it. I believe in medicine. Even though I don't believe in it's good to use drugs. I believe in medicine. But I do it. And so one day, the doctor told me that you used to have ulcer. And by what we see in this test, the organism is dead. I didn't even know. I didn't even know. So I am not denying that I'm not a human being. They said this. They called the name of the organism. But they said, by the result we are seeing, is dead. We were born not of blood. Every time they tell me that, are you a human being? The last one, the doctor told me, he said, between you and I, how can you be getting this kind of result every year? Cholesterol, fine. Kidney, fine. Liver, fine. No pressure as a Nigerian, which is supposed to be your normal neighbor. You know, high blood pressure is just your neighbor in Nigeria. He said, how are you doing it? The kingdom lives. I watch what I eat. I watch what I take. I watch what I drink. But much more, the kingdom lives on my inside. That's why God places you in a place. When you get into a company, you came there with the kingdom. You step into the place, you thought you were alone. No, it's not. Came with the host of heaven. You came with the kingdom. How do you think you want to be normal? You know, one of the things we try to. So that they can say we are intellectually fit. We are not designed to be fit. We are designed to take over territories. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Something is just a bubbling and tonight. Hallelujah. He said you don't say the kingdom is there. So anybody who is going here and there. They say there is power. There is crusade. There they go. He said, you have not entered into the kingdom. You are not born again. Some things and I ask them, are you a Christian? People think I'm insulting them. I'm talking with the revelation. The revelation. Imagine one, one ritualist or somebody takes my picture to a ritualist. You see, you can take it there. You can snap the picture. You can take it there. I mean, there are some of you guys that they are taking your picture people know and people are praying over your over your prayer. I mean because only I just I just saw people lifting up pictures. I'm sure some of them the men they know some of them the men they didn't know the men have never asked them out but they prayed them they prayed them hmm. 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 not carry your picture to she <laughs> person one looked at him one looked like me I checked well I'm an Irish sugar <laughs> my God so you can take it there but the truth is that the moment you want to try to call my name the kingdom I represent is what shows up are you with me that's what I saw you in my dream and you came you fought you used a sword me sword it's just the kingdom that is working it's not even me maybe that time I'm even snoring time with it's not even a spiritual time but the kingdom is at work the kingdom is a living thing it's a living thing it says the kingdom is in your midst it's in your midst kingdom come we are saying the kingdom of God is here so you come into the offices we said the kingdom of God is here we said the kingdom of God is here why because we are carriers of this kingdom so the next verse 22 and he said to the Days will come. Long to see one of those days that the son of mine says, saying that a time will come when you won't see again. So it's going to come into you. You know, so this thing was encoded. When he said that I'm going, I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit. It's going to be of the same spirit. It's going to come into your life. So that's how the kingdom entered into man. So if you have the Holy Spirit, you have the kingdom. Glory to God. See, leave the devil on one side. Devil, devil, devil. Please don't, don't talk to the devil. 
even talk to him. It does not matter. Everything we've been saying since yesterday. Did you see the devil there? The devil has a kingdom of his own. We have a kingdom of our own. But there's a kingdom that is superior. Do is to manifest it. The moment who does not understand what he's doing? You cannot stop a bird from flying over a head. But you can stop it from pitching his nest on your head. So you can say, not here, not today, not forever. Not forever. Be to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who gives us victory every day. I'm not trying to say he gives us victory parade on daily basis. Why? Because the kingdom is alive. So verse 23 now. So he said, you only need to look for it. Then they will say to you, look here, look here. Do not go away after them. He said, Jesus said, don't run after them. He said, for just like the lightning part of the sky shines on the order of the sky. He said, so will the son of man be in his time. He said, but first, he's going to suffer some things and be rejected by his generation. So he came in a way that nobody knew that that was they never knew. He suffered amongst them and things went down inside of them. Glory to God. I said, glory to You know, sometimes I just look at men like, you know, that lady, that girl asked something one day, he said, show me the secret of your strength. So when you see somebody who carries heavy stuff, lift up gates, bronze, when people carry things like that, how do you think the person should be in terms of size? The muscles need to be strong. So if somebody's muscle is strong, right, you can't go and ask him, what is the secret of your strength? It means that even Samson was just a slim guy like me. He, you don't think he can even carry something. But they just noticed that he's so slim. And that guy was not in the kingdom. He was seeking the kingdom. How much more you? So the girl had to ask him, what is the secret? Bicep, we can't see tricep, we can't see six pack, we can't see nothing. You're like, you're like Indomie. What's the secret to your strength? Then later on he confessed and he said that the secret to my strength is just my hair. And you know what? The number wanting to remove his strength, but the Bible says, and the hair grew again. How much more you when the devil takes you down? The hair of Samson could you don't say you want to kill yourself. I want to die. I'm depressed. much more you. If you die in depression, God will not be proud of you. You get to heaven, he will tell you even if they give you a room without AC. Yeah, give you a room without AC. Because there are levels in the kingdom. Yeah, that's it. You want to make heaven. But where you know, somebody can be living in VGC and is living in one room. I never knew until two years ago. I thought this guy was a big boy. He was living in one room and one pallor in VGC. One room and one pallor. So the idea is that a bad pass. One room, one pallor. I mean, but he was playing four million. So the list in VGC amongst those born of the women is great. And those of us Glory to God. Glory to God. I mean, he just called, he said, my next neighbor is the MD of Chevron. He, he thought I'm living, he thinks I'm not, in that place, nobody visits anybody. So we are just fine. And he has a fantastic car, has a fantastic family, and he's doing well for himself. He just we are living in one, and if you see these rooms in those places, in Northern for sure, small rooms that only your bed enters. You don't have where to put your leg and they don't give you a pallor like that. But you just want to be counted in the kingdom. Because the list is greater than those on the underside. Thank you Lord Jesus. Thank you Lord Jesus. Small boy something but lifting things. Small boy. So even see how the kingdom works. You may be so unassuming. 
but people will be checked in. How, check in. how are you getting that kind of result? How are you getting those kind of miracles? How are you getting those kind of healings? We can't see. We can't. See. There's nothing about your life that shows that you can get that kind of result. You know why? Because you came into our awareness that the kingdom of God is on your inside. Thank you, Lord. This was what Jesus was preaching, and they said, "Cut us some soap." We've been praying nonsense. Teach us how to pray. Teach us how to pray. Tonight, I want you to pray for the next five minutes. We're not saying that kingdom come. We're saying the kingdom of God is here. As you are praying that prayer, certain giftings, certain gifts will come out of you. Certain rivers will begin to come out of you. Certain things will be some intelligences you never knew about your life. Rivers of living waters begins to come. Can I hear somebody who is aware of this kingdom? Can you just stir up the kingdom? Stir up the kingdom on your inside and declare for the next five minutes and decree. Can I hear your tongues roll out tonight? We are not of mankind, we are of the God kind. Embrekela Rosta, First Peter one twenty three. Blessed be the God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He's blessed us with all blessings, even in this kingdom. He's blessed us with all things, with all things. Oh, Rabba Koshia Talada, Egrene Koshta, Hangrena La Kadosta, Egarato Kosha, Kosha, Kadabala, the Basuka, the Kadabala, the Kadabala, Oh, some dreams are coming alive now. Some visions are coming alive now. Some intelligences are coming alive now. The spirit of wisdom is coming alive now. The glory of Namakosh. Parush Kalados. The Garatosi. we give you praise stand to your feet let's receive some miracles tonight it's not our focus but it is sandwiched in the kingdom in that prayer you just hear where he said give us our daily, give us our daily bread I'll be something like that give us what did he say Give us this day our daily bread. Because he just knows that in this kingdom, shah, there will be some people who will not believe it's all about Jesus. So just give us this day our daily bread. He sandwiched it inside it. But he didn't even, he didn't even expression on it. He just mentioned it. Thank you, Lord. Lift up your hands to heaven. See how many miracles God gave us last night. You know, somebody said, I can't, I can't bend. And I said, show me how you can bend. And he began to touch his nails. And he said he couldn't bend. Two months, he's not been able to bend her. And the person began to bend. Oh, Rabba Kosta Halada. Oh, Remba Kosta Handa Bradoshaka. Lift up your hands and pray in the Holy Ghost and desire, desire a gift from the Lord tonight. Desire a virgin dimension from the Lord tonight. Oh, Rabba Kosha Halada Bariada Bokosha. Zeneba Kosha Hagarata Kato Ziatara. Oh, Rabba Karado Shagala Taziala. Oh, I see gates closed. They are opening up now. Come on, begin to pray. Begin to pray. Miracles are happening right now. They're happening right now. Closed gates are opening. Closed doors are opening. Shagarata Lada Bakoshi. 
and proclose the hang of that air. I'm seeing verdicts, negative verdicts. They are changing. They are changing. They are changing. Shagara to Koraba. I'm seeing somebody who's been denied of a visa. And I'm seeing a new opening. I'm seeing a new opening. And as you jump into this one, something is happening. Shagara to Rianaba. Oh, Rabba Koshiala. Oh, Rabba Kasha. Miracles everywhere. Miracles everywhere. Miracles everywhere. Miracles everywhere. Miracles everywhere. Shagara Raboshia. Oh, Rabba Kasha. Echo Rabo Shahalara. Eh, Rabba Koshahala. Ah, wombs are open. Wombs are open. Wombs are open. Yenabo Koshahala. Zenabo Koshahala. Parakoshaka. Zenabo Koshia. Agaranova Koshahala. Oh, Shagarana Bala. Oh, Rebo Koshaha. Come and begin to receive it, begin to receive it. No drama, no drama, no drama. Just begin to receive miracles. Byproducts, byproducts of the kingdom. Oh, Rabba Kasha. The gates are opening. The gates are opening. The gates are opening. Karaba Kosha Halada. Oh, Rabba Kosha Galatosiada. Oh, Rabba Kosha Halada. Oh, Rabba Bashaga. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. I perceive in my spirit. There are some people that gates of nations are opening for. Whether you've been denied a visa or not. Whether you have the school fees or not. Whether you have all the takes or not. But I'm seeing an opening. I saw a door labeled nations. And I saw it just open up. I just saw it opening up. I saw it opening up. I saw it opening up. There's somebody that's going to get a supernatural job outside the shores of this nation, but you're not even thinking about it because in the kingdom, that's not our focus. But it's opening. It's opening. It's opening. It's opening. Oh, Rabba it's opening, it's opening, it's opening. Lamba Kosta Hagarado Siatalara. Oh, Paracustekere. Everybody lift up your hands right now. It's opening, it's opening, it's opening. Every ghost gate, close gate. For you have been very faithful in little. You have been faithful in little, say the Lord. But I want to open up something new for you. I want to open up something new for you. Adam met his end inside Jesus. Adam met his end inside Jesus. Some of you, you are coming to the end of a new season. And you are coming into a new season. Oh, Rabba Koshi Atala. Ebra Kosha Anda Kara Namakashi. Oh, Rabba Kosha Alatosia. Oh, Rabba Koshi Ada. It's happening, it's happening. It's happening, it's happening. Lembra Kosha Hagara Nosia. Agaraba Kosha. Oh, we give you praise, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In the kingdom, you don't need a drama. You just believe because the kingdom lives inside of you. So you can see that when somebody does a miracle, you should not be impressed. You should see it as what is normal in our kingdom. As what is normal in our kingdom. That's what is normal. The kingdom has influence. And he said, that he said, thine is the kingdom. Thy glory and thy what? Power. Some people are looking for power. He said, power and glory is byproduct of the kingdom. It's opening. It's opening. It's opening. It's opening. Oh, I lay my hands on you from where I am tonight. It's opening. God sent me to tell you that He's opening. He's opening. He's opening. He's opening. Some of you are wondering what is opening. Didn't you know that Saul was being anointed when there was a king on the seat? 
While the king was still on the scene, God was saying, I'm anointing a new king. He's opening, he's opening, he's opening, he's opening. Shagarada Bakoshiatala, he's opening. Oh, Saul, it is opening. David, it is opening. Oh, Rabakoshahala, he's opening, he's opening, he's opening, he's opening. Oh, Rabakoshiatala, no more delays, no more struggles. No more, no more. It's opening. We give you glory, Lord. We give you praise. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Some of you, your story has been really bad. Your story has been really bad. You know how they brought that woman to Jesus and they said, judge her. Jesus picked his hand and began to write on the floor. And people are wondering, what is he saying? What is he doing? We say you should judge a matter. You couldn't do anything. After writing, he said something that provoked them. And they all walked away. He was writing a new story, a new plan, a new verdict for the woman. I could almost see that she, well, they said she's an adulterer. And Jesus was writing on the floor, she is not an adulterer. I'm seeing negative verdict changing. bad stories, negative stories, judgmental stories. I'm just seeing God writing something new. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. If the old covenant was enough, he wouldn't have cleaned it up to write a new one. He said, but I will write my covenant in your heart, and I'm going to give you rest. There's a new covenant that is writing. He's writing it in your heart. He's writing it in your heart. He's writing it in your heart. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We give you glory. We give you praise. You know what I want you to do tonight for the next two minutes? I want you to celebrate the kingdom. Not the one that you are looking for. Not the one that you think you are going to. The one that is already living on your inside. You will scream. You will jump. You will shout. And give God the best praise. 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 Rejoice! 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 Wow! What an amazing service! And if at the course of this message you gave your life to Christ, please send us a message via the number displayed on the screen. Do have a wonderful time. God bless you.